These are a few of the food and dairy customers we work with to provide some of the solutions that we'll discuss briefly. If you'd like to get more information, please feel free to contact us. So I'll turn the webinar over now to Pat Walsh to discuss some of our instrumentation used in water quality determination. Okay, thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone, and, and thanks, for, thanks again for joining us. Uh, in our discussion today, I want to highlight two important aspects of water conservation as it applies, applies to food production. First, I'll concentrate on the aspects of process monitoring to help optimize the water usage in production. Second, we'll focus on water reuse as facilities are looking to capture and reuse the precious water that is recovered from processing both food and milk. So what all is associated with the cost of water? One huge factor is effluent management. What impact does your effluent have on your operation and bottom line? Are you paying monthly surcharges to your municipal plant, struggling to meet NPDES permit limits? How about getting bad publicity from fines or violations or spending large amounts of money with your chemical provider? All of these are real, everyday issues that plants face, and I'm sure a lot of you are doing the same thing. In your process, are you struggling with irregularities in your operation? Many factors can cause havoc in production, which can affect your water quality biological overloads, wasted water, over-treating or under-treating the water, issues with CIP control, or possibly not having a good chemical treatment program to treat the water, capital equipment protection, corrosion issues, breakthroughs, leaks, maintenance costs, and issues, uh, that ton of other issues that uh, may be factors that affect your daily operation. All of these result in unnecessary cost to you and ultimately your customers. So why should you want to conserve water? Uh, one example comes from the dairy industry. I'm, I'm probably not telling those of you that are in the dairy industry anything you don't already know, but the uh, typical dairy plant consumes about four gallons of water for every gallon of milk that they produce. As you can imagine, this can be very costly. What if you were able to reduce that amount in half or, or possibly conserve down to a one-to-one -one ratio? As you see on the graph, um, an example of two plants is shown. Plant A has a well-run water reuse program, and it's producing one gallon of milk for every gallon of water used. Plant B is using four gallons of water for every gallon of milk they produce. The annual cost savings is substantial and really goes directly to the bottom line. In this example, the savings have been achieved by using conductivity, turbidity, TOC, and microbiology in the CIP process. To understand when the lines are, the lines are clean enough versus having to push excess, uh, excess push water through, um, also monitoring chlorination following CIP can also help reduce this water use. Uh, this is a real example and kind of gives you an idea of what is capable uh, of in, in production. So measuring water quality, Let, let's look at the most common parameters in water testing and what they do to help you manage your water usage. pH measurement. Almost all processes containing water have a need for pH measurement. Uh, most living things depend on a proper pH level to sustain life, and there are numerous applications for pH in food and dairy facilities. Basically, everywhere water is used is a potential application. Because of accurate pH control, processes can run more efficiently, products are manufactured at lower cost, and the environment is safer and cleaner. As you see in the, on the screen, uh, pH is relatively inexpensive, easy to implement, and helps to ensure proper CIP processes in food and dairy facilities. However, it doesn't actually tell you what's in the water, is only going to give you a pH reading of the solution. It does require a pretty consistent calibration and of course must stay wet and well maintained to be reliable. I've, I've been in numerous plants and, and facilities where calibration isn't performed on schedule and maintenance is an afterthought on pH probes 
Um, at these locations, the, the probes are basically taking up space and, and really shouldn't be used for monitoring at all. You know, if you if you don't take care of the probes, you're not going to get reliable results. That's just the nature of the beast on the on pH. The Hawk PhD series uh, that you see on the screen is um, it's the intelligent choice for pH measurement. It uses our unique differential electrode technology. Uh, this superior technology is proven to provide unsurpassed accuracy, reduce reference junction fouling, and virtually eliminate ground loops, resulting in greater reliability with less downtime and maintenance. An industry-exclusive 30-month warranty program covers the PhD series. These sensors have a built-in preamplifier to boost the electrode signal for transmission up to 3,000 feet. The PEAK or Riton-bodied sensors offer exceptional chemical resistance and aggressive process solutions. Convertible, insertion, and sanitary sensor mounting styles enable installation in most process applications. As you see inside of the sensor, a replaceable salt bridge allows the probe to be easily rebuilt. Uh, this is a great way to ensure measurement accuracy while extending the functional life of the pH and ORP probes. Instead of having to re replace the probe, you simply replace the salt bridge, add the buffer solution, and calibrate. The probe is ready to be put back into the process immediately. Next, we're going to discuss conductivity. Simply put, Conductivity is a, a measure of the ability of a solution to conduct an electric current. Uh, conductivity is a very common measurement in food and dairy applications. It, it's a quick way to check for dissolved solids. Uh, it's easy to install and maintain, and it's used throughout the facility from CIP processes to boilers, cooling towers, and many other locations. It's a very valuable tool to see baseline trends, but does have some limitations. Uh, in a process stream, total dissolved solids, or TDS, is commonly measured with, with a conductivity analyzer. However, as you can see, conductivity does not detect undissolved solids. Uh, since conductivity misses undissolved solids, it may give the operator a false sense of security about the cleanliness of the water. It also misses organic content, and most probes, uh, probes have to contact the fluid to, to get a reading. Ox inductive conductivity probes are for use in dirty water applications. Uh, the sensor is enclosed, and it doesn't require direct contact with the fluid to read. Uh, the inductive sensor design eliminates polarization and electrode coating problems that is a common effect of uh, conventional contacting electrode type conductivity sensors. The contacting conductivity sensor is meant for use in clean water. Uh, the sensor is in direct contact with the fluid, and there is a large variety of mounting options available. These sensors are manufactured to exacting tolerances using high quality, rugged materials for demanding applications. Uh, these include ultra pure water clean in place, and boiler and condensate monitoring. Next, we're going to move on to turbidity. Um, Hawk has a wide variety of turbidity analyzers that detect suspended particles. Uh, advantages include that the, the, the units offering immediate feedback uh, as far as a reading, and, and in dairies uh, may actually correlate to milk in, in a controlled environment. However, if the environment isn't controlled, the unit will also show numerous other items that also affect the turbidity reading. Uh, these, could, these could include acid, caustic, clay, silt, and other solids that may flow past the sensor. As far as lost product goes, the, uh, the unit isn't really sensitive enough to catch everything. And also, there is no organic detection, but only turbidity or solids. Uh, as you'll see in the next slide, there are limitations to using turbidity for lost product. In the example shown here in uh, the manhole number one, the turbidity meter does a great job picking up the milk spill with a spike in the reading. If we were certain that milk was the only thing that had the potential to enter the waste stream, uh, turbidity may be a valuable reading to have. However, 
You see that in manhole number two, the unit picks up many things that could be determined to be milk spills. The spikes are very similar to what we saw in the first graph in manhole number one. However, on closer observation, we see that the spikes are not milk, but other things that the analyzer saw as turbidity. Uh, these could be things as common as floor wash, change of product, and CIP discharge, along with many other contaminants that have found their way into the drain. Uh, it would be very difficult to be an operator at this plant and trying to determine what was really lost product and what was just a spike from something else in the plant. Uh, operation it could come from operation or from maintenance and it's very typical in a plant to have things come into the stream that you have no idea what it is. Hawk has such a large variety of turbidity probes that uh, Greg and I could have easily spent the entire presentation going over the available products. Uh, be assured that no matter the temperature, the environment, the application, uh, the measurement range or installation requirements, we more than likely have a turbidity analyzer that meets your needs. Uh, the best way to determine what you actually need is to talk with the representative from Hawk, either on the phone or in person, and together you can find the correct analyzer for your application. The Hawk TSS SC probes you see depicted here on the screen have a, a double optical system with two pulsating infrared LEDs and four receivers. As the transmitted light is scattered, the receivers pick up the incident light at 90 degrees and 120 degree angles, effectively doubling the accuracy of the instrument. This eight channel measurement system with an integrated bubble and temperature compensating software enables the instrument to have a wide measuring range that effectively cover most applications, from the darkest pre-treated water to the cleanest waters, all with one instrument. Next, we're going to look at uh, UV. Uh, ultraviolet, or UV absorption, offers several advantages to the plant operator. It gives us a very nice snapshot of general organic content. Uh, in dairies, it can correlate to milk products, and it gives an immediate feedback, so you can make changes and adjustments very quickly. However, it is not a direct measurement of milk and does have to be correlated. Uh, that correlation can be tricky. It, it doesn't always, doesn't always uh, make sense what you're seeing. And it also doesn't allow you to quantify the amount of milk lost. Uh, UV light isn't absorbed by single bonded organic compounds and sugars will pass undetected over the sensor. Uh, as you can see on the, on the graphic of the spectral absorption coefficient, uh, some COD and TOC will not be detected at all. The Hawk UVOS sensor uh, continuously monitors water for variations in the organic loading. Operators can use the continuous readings of UV absorbance or transmission to watch for sudden changes in organic load that would require alternate treatment procedures. It's great for things like trending and, and, and seeing process changes, but uh, as I said earlier, it will miss many of the compounds that it cannot pick up. This next slide is going to give us a little bit closer look. Yep. It's going to give us a little bit closer look uh, into how TOC differs from UV in, in detecting detection of different chemicals. Um, you can see that the TLC measurement captures a wide variety of compounds on that middle uh, row there, while the, um, well, the UV absorption method is missing on the detection of sugars. And since lactose is found frequently in food application, it, it's really important to know the limitations of this technology. Now looking at total organic comp total organic carbon uh, direct measurement, we see that it is able to directly detect the presence of milk. If we have uh, carbon present, then milk is present in the sample. Uh, the TLC measurement can basically quantify the amount of milk present by reading the carbon content of the sample. Uh, the TLC analyzer takes the molecule, breaks it up by the use of oxidation, and then stacks and counts the molecules. In our case, the reading of the carbon molecules is key to determining the amount of milk in the waste stream. 
On the negative side, it's a slower measurement, about five to seven minutes, and uh, there are also several different analyzers on the market. But uh, most of these analyzers were not designed originally for the rigors of an industrial setting. And many of these were first designed for use in a, in a lab under tightly controlled environments, and then were kind of later adapted, that technology adapted to be used in process situations. Uh, these analyzers were really not able to perform at a high level of consistency, uh, especially in industries like food and dairy, where there are a lot of fats, oils, and greases present. Uh, the Hawk Biotector unit, however, was designed for use in industry and has been used in dairies throughout the world for, for many, many years. Uh, Biotector is a company that we purchased uh, from Ireland who had a long history in the, in the dairy industry in, in throughout Europe. Uh, it uses base to clean the unit between each measurement and easily breaks down the fats, oils, and greases. So the environment of a food and dairy facility is really less of a challenge for the biotector than for other TOC analyzers on the market. So why, why measure with TOC? Um, as you can see, it offers many advantages over other organic measurements. Um, it is as, it's a much faster an analysis, which allows the operator to make changes quickly and, and gives a better control of the process. If an upset is detected, the waste stream can be diverted to an EQ tank or, or back to the head of the plant if possible. And further treatment, um, if necessary, could happen there. This allows you to avoid costly surcharges and possible violations if you send the stream on out to a municipal plant or, or onto, a, uh, onto the final effluent. It also costs less per test and has a much higher accuracy than the other methods. COD and BOD have numerous interferences and many of these are commonly found in food and dairy applications. Also, TOC analysis does not generate any hazardous waste streams that you'll have to dispose of, as the other methods do. So this slide gives us a, a good indication of how TOC compares to COD, BOD, and UV. Uh, TOC allows you to see all the organic compounds. It's a, the direct measurement method, and as I mentioned earlier, um, it, it's going to measure the carbon concentrations. As the diagram shows, each parameter measures part of the entire organic load. UV absorption is missing the sugars and some other organics. COD and BOD both have issues with the amount of time it takes to get a result. COD is typically two and a half hours, while BOD, of course, is five days. Um, trying to make any kind of process change with waiting to get those results back is definitely tough and um, not, not really conducive to good operation. However, TLC analysis can be done in minutes, and it's going to allow the operator and management team to make uh, informed decisions on managing the process and the waste stream. We offer several TLC analyzers for use in food and dairy um, facilities. The, the B7000 shown here has several ranges to choose from. Uh, it can be used to monitor both influent and effluent at wastewater treatment plants. Uh, it's used for industry process control, product loss, and, and oil and water separation. Uh, the results are available in around seven minutes, just under seven minutes and the unit can be configured for a variety of additional parameters and multiple stream measurements. Uh, the unit will give both a COD and BOD correlation and has optional modules that can be added. Uh, the unit is very robust, dependable, and only has to be serviced every six months. To achieve this type of performance in harsh process environments, the, the Biotector uses a patented two-stage oxidation process to break down the organics. Uh, it is self-cleaning, and you can take most samples without any pre-filtering or dilution. Uh, the result is a certified uptime of over 99%, which if you know anything at all about TOC analyzers, that, that's just remarkable that we can get that kind of performance. But uh, the, the, the way it was designed was designed, as I said earlier, for in industries, and uh, it's just a really robust analyzer that is meant for, uh, for 
your type of application in, in food and dairy. But now I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Greg, and he's going to talk about condensate and water reuse. All right, thanks, Pat. So now we will talk a little about condensate return and water reuse. Uh, you know, there are a number of ways to impact your plant's operation costs with water reuse and recycle. There's condensate return, uh, reuse of permeate from evaporator effects. You can add the alkalizers to boiler feed water systems. You can measure softener efficiency uh, via an elution study. Uh, you can use process water as cooling tower makeup, etc. I'm only going to tackle a couple of those today, but just so you know, Hawk does have analytical solutions for all of these. And as far as uh, you know, if you're interested in adding a dealkalizer to increase boiler cycles or making sure that your softener is working efficiently, talk to your water treatment vendor, and they should be able to provide you more information around that. So why is condensate use important? There are a couple of different areas to consider for condensate reuse when thinking about the food industry. There's condensate return from boilers and condensate of whey or cow water in dairies. And you see on the slide, you know, of course, there's energy savings to be had, um, increasing boiler cycles to reduce water requirements. That's also going to reduce chemical requirements and uh, save on fuel. And both of these types of condensate do have great BTU value for the plant, and that's where this, the fuel savings is, is uh, incurred. But you have to remember that you know, to use this condensate, it needs to be clean. And in the instance of cow water or condensate of whey, you know, 80%, 87% of milk is water, but it has to be organic free for boiler use. So when talking about cow water, keep in mind, again, the origin is milk, not water. So organics may be present in that water. What, what you see here is, uh, you know, in discussing the benefits of return condensate, this calculator comes from the Department of Energy, and it shows the potential savings that can be incurred by simply by increasing condensate return from 60% to 90%. And 90% is a best practices goal. But keep in mind also as you look at this, when you look at the bottom line on the savings, uh, the calculator does not include the additional savings that would be achieved by reducing makeup water volume, so there's a cost to the makeup water. There's a cost in fuel, which is what we're looking at in the calculator. And then there's sewer costs related to blowdown. So the makeup water and the blowdown are not included in the uh, calculator. But your Hawk rep can discuss this with you in further detail if you would like. Oops. So this is water reuse is, uh, you know, there are a number of industrial food processes that create condensate, whether that's from steam condensing or evaporation of milk products. Typically, condensate will be clean unless there are exchanger or condenser leaks. So if organics contaminate condensate, issues can arise in boiler systems and cooling water. Uh, some of these might include deposits, acidic corrosion from organic contaminants in boilers, and microbial growth in cooling water that will eventually decrease heat exchange efficiencies. So this is where Hawk can help. With our Biotector B3500C, it's our TOC anal online process TOC analyzer. And you can monitor condensate 24 hours a day, gain early detection of organics, and make operational decisions to protect your plant assets. Some of these decisions might include diverting contaminated condensate until leaks are identified and isolated, or increasing biocide levels to limit the microbial growth in cooling water. The Hawk Biotector was designed for industrial environments, as Pat mentioned, 
and, and process stream. It supplies patented oxidation technology. That's our two-stage advanced oxidation. And it's been field proven for about 20 years to give accurate and reliable information that can be trusted. And that's a big thing with these TOC units is do you trust the alarm? And with the biodetector, you definitely can. These units require no filtration. Uh, they have a 99.86% uptime. They'll run a TOC sample every six minutes. And they only require maintenance about every six months. So let's look. <clears throat> This is a slide depicting the, uh, the technology. And I'm going to skip right by that so that we can talk about how the uh, biotector works. So the biotector takes a sample. If you, if you look at these in order, sampling, measuring tick, oxidation, measuring talc, and then cleaning. The biotector takes a sample, sample at ambient pressure and brings it to the reactor. And it begins measuring the sample for TIT, which is inorganic carbon like carbonates and bicarbonate. It does this by adding acid to the reactor and then sparging the CO2 that's formed in the reactor so that it can be read in the instrument's IR, infrared technology. Then sodium hydroxide and ozone are added to the same sample in the reactor. And this produces a hydroxyl radical, which is a very powerful oxidant. The hydroxyl radical will oxidize all of the TOC, which are the organics that contribute to BOD and are food for bacteria and can form acids and things like that in your, in your processes. We then add acid again to produce CO2, which is also sparged to the instrument's IR. The uh, tick and talc components are clearly graphed on the instrument display. And in the meantime, the previous sample, which was stored in a catch tube within the instrument, is expelled by running the sample pump in reverse to clean out the sample line. So the hydroxyl radical itself keeps the reactor clean. And then the previous sample that was analyzed is expelled in a reverse fashion through the sample line to clean that line. The instrument also self-zeroes by running pure oxygen and checks for leaks after every test. So now the biotector is ready for the next sample. So this slide depicts a condensate return application. So in this case, the boiler produces the steam. As you see, the boiler in red, the steam lines are in red as well. So it produces steam that goes to the process. In this example, it's heat exchangers where it's going to be condensed and forms condensate. The return condensate is then sent to a collection tank where it can be analyzed for contaminants. This is also where you're probably analyzing that return condensate for pH and conductivity to make sure it meets specification. If all the parameters are within specification, then the condensate can be used for boiler makeup water or boiler feed water. If not, the contaminated material should be diverted the drain until the leak is oscillated and found. So in this case study, it's a petrochemical plant that purchases steam from a cogen and then returns the condensate after the steam is used and condensed in the plant. The return condensate goes back to the cogen. And there are monetary penalties in place for exceeding TOC levels. So this customer had UV persulfate TOC analyzers in place that required weekly calibration at a cost of $1,000 per week or $52,000 per year. The frequent downtime resulted in uncertainty and a lack of confidence in their results. I talked about that a little bit earlier, that with these TOC units, you really need to have confidence in the data. So when the biotector B3500C was installed, it resulted in eradicating all the calibration costs and penalties. Maintenance was also reduced to every six months instead of weekly. And that was basically for tubing replacement, reagent replacement, and calibration. 
The next case study is from a uh, corn milling operation in the Midwest. And this customer had a $100 million boiler and several high temp oxidation TOC analyzers on site. So you can imagine they wanted to protect that $100 million boiler. The high temp oxidation analyzers have furnaces that operate at 600 to 1200 degrees to basically cook everything in the sample. And these units were giving false alarms that were caused by chronic analyzer drift and furnace buildup, which is common with high temp TOC analyzers. So as a result of the alarms, the plant was uh, diverting 59% of their condensate to the drain on a daily basis. So this customer installed Biotector B3500Cs, and they began to see the 99.86% uptime. The management group gained confidence in the TOC analyses and the data. And the customer found it necessary to divert only 5% of their condensate. And the client or the customer reported to us that that equated to an average savings on a daily basis of around $34,000. Pretty substantial. So here are some of the instrument solutions Hawk has for measuring condensate in process, uh, portably and in the lab. So if you see first on the upper left is the SC200. That's our industrial controller capable of receiving two signal inputs. And in this example, we're showing pH and conductivity, which again are typical for condensate return. In the upper middle, you see the PPA. That's a newer hot portable technology. And with that, we can analyze up to six parameters simultaneously. This is done by uh, inserting four chem keys, as we call them, on the bottom, into the bottom of the analyzer. And then those chem keys are dipped into the sample for a few seconds. Those chem keys will absorb the sample, and the PPA runs the test. So the benefit of this analyzer is that it limits test data variability that you'll see from operator to operator. We also have two digital connections that can accept our probes for pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, and a few other ion-specific electrode options. Then you see the DR1900 in the bottom left. That's a portable spectrophotometer that replaces the DR900. And the DR3900 is our benchtop spectrophotometer. Then you also have the online process TLC analyzer, the biodetector that we've discussed. So finally, let's consider microbial content when planning to reuse process water. Depending on the intended use for the recycled water, microbio may have to be measured. You know, there are a number of methods for doing this. There's dip slides, swabs, plate counts, et cetera. Most customers use microbio activity by collecting swabs from equipment services, surfaces, or heterotrophic plate count tests that must be incubated for 16 to 48 hours. One of the issues with these methods is that they only show a fraction of the viable population. So Hawk carries the Lumen Ultra ATP analyzer. And this analyzer measures ATP, which is present in all living cells. So it provides a result in minutes versus a day or two and it allows for proactive response for sanitizing and disinfection. Some of the areas where this can be utilized include monitoring cow water, cooling water biocide programs, and wastewater. And you may have other options in your plant and areas that need to be addressed that will require a quicker response than you may be getting now. So to conclude our webinar today, uh, just a summary, while water conservation is a great sustainability initiative, the bottom line is that it saves you money. But if you don't measure your processes, they can't be improved. So we've discussed a variety of tools today that can be used to monitor your systems, but your specific needs will be determined by your operational requirements and infrastructure that's in place. 
And of course, proper deployment is the key to how beneficial the data is to your site. Talk can help with these decisions, and we'd love to do it.